Warm greetings to you, and thanks for joining me today. These are the readings for day number 76 in the Digging Deeper Daily reading calendar. Numbers 14, Psalm 34, and our first reading in Luke 22. Yesterday we found out what the Lord thinks when we grumble against Him. Let's remember Miriam. Then the Lord commanded to send out the spies, but after taking stock of the land of Canaan, they brought an evil, unbelieving report. Numbers 14 Then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. They complained, If only we had died in Egypt! or even here in the wilderness. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves, Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, The land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land, and if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. But the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to all the Israelites at the tabernacle, and the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt, even after all the miraculous signs I have done among them? I will disown them and destroy them with a plague. Then I will make you into a nation greater and mightier than they are. But Moses objected and asked the Lord, What will the Egyptians think when they hear about it? They know full well the power you displayed in rescuing your people from Egypt. Now if you destroy them, the Egyptians will send a report to all the inhabitants of this land who have already heard that you live among your people. They know, Lord, that you have appeared to your people face to face, and that your pillar of cloud hovers over them. They know that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Now if you slaughter all these people with a single blow, the nations that have heard of your fame will say, The Lord was not able to bring them into the land he swore to give them, so he killed them in the wilderness. Please, Lord. Prove that your power is as great as you have claimed. For you said, The Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. But he does not excuse the guilty. He lays the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. In keeping with your magnificent, unfailing love, please pardon the sins of this people just as you have forgiven them ever since they left Egypt. Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested. But as surely as I live, and as surely as the earth is filled with the Lord's glory, not one of these people will ever enter that land. They have all seen the glorious presence and the miraculous signs I performed both in Egypt and in the wilderness, but again and again they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. They will never even see the land I swore to give to their ancestors. None of those who have treated me with contempt will ever see it, but my servant, Caleb, has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. Now turn around and don't go on toward the land where the Amalekites and Canaanites live. Tomorrow you must set out for the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, 
How long must I put up with this wicked community and its complaints against me? Yes, I have heard the complaints the Israelites are making against me. Now tell them this. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. You will all drop dead in this wilderness. Because you complained against me, every one of you who is twenty years old or older and was included in the registration will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. You said your children would be carried off as plunder. Well, I will bring them safely into the land, and they will enjoy what you have despised. But as for you, you will drop dead in the wilderness, and your children will be like shepherds wandering in the wilderness for forty years. In this way, you will pay for your faithlessness until the last of you lies dead in the wilderness. Because your men explored the land for forty days, you must wander in the wilderness for forty years, a year for each day, suffering the consequences of your sins. Then you will discover what it is like to have me as your enemy. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will certainly do these things to every member of the community who has conspired against me. They will be destroyed here in the wilderness, and here they will die. The ten men Moses had sent to explore the land, the ones who incited rebellion against the Lord with their bad report, were struck dead with a plague before the Lord. Of the twelve who had explored the land, only Joshua and Caleb remained alive. When Moses reported the Lord's words to all the Israelites, the people were filled with grief. Then they got up early the next morning and went to the top of the range of hills. Let's go, they said. We realize that we have sinned, but now we are ready to enter the land the Lord has promised us. But Moses said, Why are you now disobeying the Lord's orders to return to the wilderness? It won't work. Do not go into the land now. You will only be crushed by your enemies because the Lord is not with you. When you face the Amalekites and Canaanites in battle, you will be slaughtered. The Lord will abandon you because you have abandoned the Lord. But the people defiantly pushed ahead toward the hill country, even though neither Moses nor the Ark of the Lord's Covenant left the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in those hills came down and attacked them and chased them back as far as Hormah. Psalm 34 is an acrostic psalm with each verse starting with a new letter of the Hebrew alphabet and its introduction gives us the context for this psalm. Psalm 34 A psalm of David regarding the time he pretended to be insane in front of Abimelech, who sent him away. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, 
but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and I know it. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Yes. The righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. For the Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Yesterday we heard Jesus' prophecy about what will happen in judgment upon Jerusalem and before his return. Luke chapter 22. The festival of unleavened bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching. The leading priests and teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. Then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples, and he went to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted, and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus, so they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead, and he said, Go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat it together. Where do you want us to prepare it? they asked him. He replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But here at this table, sitting among us as a friend, is the man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. But what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? The disciples began to ask each other, which of them would do such a thing? 
Then they began to argue among themselves who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, In this world the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here, for I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers, Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison for you, and even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Then Jesus asked them, When I sent you out to preach good news, and you did not have money, a traveler's bag, or an extra pair of sandals, Did you need anything? No, they replied. But now, he said, take your money and a traveler's bag, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. For the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. He was counted among the rebels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. Look, Lord, they replied. We have two swords among us. That's enough, he said. Thanks to Joel Ty Green for reading from Luke 22 for us today. In the first recording of this, when Joel was reading, it was in 2014, and for the prayer, I was reminded of how in 2010, it looked like nothing good would happen. It looked like the translation that we were working on would never see the light of day. But in 2014, it was published. At that dark time in 2010, Psalms like Psalm 34 meant a lot to me. Let's pray together. Our Father, our holy and awesome God, I thank you that when we pray to you, you answer us and you free us from our fears. Those who look to you for help will become radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces because you answer their prayers. In my desperation, I prayed and you listened, Lord. You saved me from all my troubles. Thank you for that angel that is camping around us and defending all of us who fear you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, yes, Lord, you are good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in you. Lord, it is my testimony that you are close to the brokenhearted, and you rescue those who whose spirits are crushed. I pray that you would be especially near to any of my listeners who have trouble believing that you could be on their side. Help them to hear and apply appropriately the words of this psalm and trust you fully. And may all of us live for the glory of Christ today.